Hello there, mathematicians. Today's objective is students will be able to solve literal, and let's put this in parentheses, solve literal equations for a specific variable. Get that down in your notes. Okay, now I want to say up front that this objective at first is going to seem weird, okay? But it's actually the exact same thing, the exact same process that we've been doing with solving one step equations, okay? Now let's start with a little background knowledge. If I give you, and you guys should write this down with me, if I give you the number two and put it over two, what happens with it? Well, 2 divided by 2 basically cancels or it becomes 1, right? 2 divided by 2 is 1, okay? Now, if I give you A over A, what happens with it? Well, it's going to cancel to be 1, and here's why, okay? Like, if A is, let's just say A is 5, and then this A is also 5, right? It has to be the same thing. 5 over 5 is going to cancel to be 1. So no matter what I put... If I put a smiley face over a smiley face that's the same, okay, what's going to happen with those? Well, they're going to cancel out. Okay, that's really important to understand that. Anything over itself in a fraction is going to cancel, okay? So if we look at number one, it says, example number one here says, solve this equation. Solve S equals D over T for D. Okay. Now, real quick, hopefully some of you know what this equation is actually about. This is the equation for speed. So just come up here, and let's write this out. This is speed is equal to distance, distance over, what do you think T stands for? Time. So to measure speed, you simply take the distance and divide it by the time and that will tell you the speed. Okay. Well, we want to solve this equation for d. Whenever we're solving an equation for something, for a variable, that means that we simply have to get that variable all by itself on one side of the equal to sign. Okay. Now, we're going to ask ourselves the exact same question that we've been asking ourselves. When we're solving for a variable, we simply ask ourselves, what is being done to the variable? Or what's being done on the same side of the variable? Okay. And we taught you guys a very specific way to organize this. Okay, We ask what's being done, and then what's the inverse. So if we're solving for D, look on the, so take your hand, take your finger, cover up the S and the equal to sign. We're only focused on the side with D, which is the right-hand side. And then kind of say that. It would be D over T, right? or D divided by T. So that tells us right there what's being done. We are dividing by T. Again, we want to know. You may be saying, well, they're all variables. We want to ask ourselves what's being done to the variable that we're solving for, and it says to solve for d. So what is being done to d? Okay, and we said d divided by t. How do we undo division by t? Well, we simply multiply by t. And this right here tells us what we need to do to both sides of the equation. Now, I want, all of, I want you guys rewriting this equation right here so that we have a little bit more room. Okay. Now, to multiply both sides by t, okay, we're going to multiply this entire side by t. Okay. Now, this is really important that you understand this. t, okay, so just write t down here. t can be written, how would I write it as a fraction? It would be t over 1. Again, anything we can write over 1. So this up here, we're going to write t over 1. And now, do you see how we have t in the numerator, or in the denominator right here, and t in the numerator. Again, this gets back to down here. What is going to happen if you have, let's just say, t on top and t on bottom? They are going to cancel. Okay. And again, we multiply the right side by t, so we also have to multiply this left side by t. Okay. And I don't need to show t over 1 because s isn't a fraction, so why make t a fraction? 
Okay, so now I have, I just bring down that D, D is equal to T times S. Another way of showing this, D is equal to, um, a good way of doing this, you should put the variables in alphabetical order. So M N O P Q R S T U V. So S should come first. So it should be S, and then remember, we can just show the variables touching, and we know that means multiplication. So our final answer on this one would be D equals S T. Or we could write it this way, D equals S T. Okay? Those would be the final answers. Okay? Now you may think, well, that's weird. We didn't really do anything. We manipulated the equation. We solved for D. We have D all by itself. Okay? So that's what we're doing in this objective. Same process, same concept. It just looks a little weird until you get used to it. All right, let's look at example two. It says solve the equation g equals x, y, z for the variable z. So we're solving for z. So we have to ask ourselves, well, what all is being done to z? Okay. Well, if we look at the same side of z, we have an x, a y, and a z. Now we see, so what all is being done? And then what's the inverse? We see right now that y is touching z, right? So we know because it's touching that we're definitely multiplying by y, okay? But, and this is an important property with multiplication, does it matter whether you do 2 times 3 times, let's just say, 5, or whether we do change the order up and do like 3 times 2 times 5? Does it matter when we change the order with multiplication? If you don't believe me, do it on your calculator, you're going to get the same thing. But the answer is no. With multiplication, order doesn't matter. So because all three of these variables are all touching, that means that everything, z is being multiplied by both x and by y. So we're actually, and what's the being done side, we're actually multiplying by x, y. Again, both of those are being multiplied by z. Okay. The other way to think about this is, we have to get z all by itself. So we have to move this x and the y to the other side. And the question is, well, how do you move them to the other side? You do the inverse operation. Okay, so they were being multiplied. So we need to divide both sides by x and y. Okay, now when we divide, we use a little squiggly line. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so we said that we are going to divide both sides by x and y. Divide both sides by x and y. Again, we do the exact same thing to both sides. Okay? Now, what happens with x over x? Cancels to be 1. y over y cancels to be 1. So we have basically 1z is equal to. And then this looks weird, but just rewrite it exactly the way you see it. We have g over xy. Okay. Now, do we need to show this 1 here in front of the z? And the answer is no. So we could just write z is equal to g over xy. And some of you like the variable on the left. That's typically the standard way of showing it. So we could rewrite it as g z equals g over xy. That is your answer. And again, these two things are the exact same thing. Okay. It looks funny, but we go back. We just solved for z. We got z all by itself. All right, I think we're just going to do one more because this one is a little bit different. So it says solve v equals g plus t for the variable t. So this means that we need t all by itself. So our answer should be t equals something. Okay. So because we're solving for t, we ask, well, what is being done to t? Or what is being done, what's hanging out on the same side as t? Okay, so if we look at the t, the t is on the right-hand side. So we're only going to focus on the right-hand side of the equal to sign. And we see g plus t. Okay, now what's hanging out over there? What all is on the same side of t? And we have just a positive g hanging out. Now, this is so, so, so important. Okay, when we look and say, oh, it's positive g. Okay, this, put your pencils down because I want you to just listen to this and watch. When we say it's positive g, okay, we are not 
looking at this plus sign right here. A lot of you say, oh, it's plus, so it's a positive G. No, what we are looking at is the sign in front of G, okay? And there's nothing there which tells us we know it's a positive, right? If I just give you two, you know it's a positive two, okay? So what's hanging out over here is a positive G, okay? How do, what's the inverse of a positive G? Okay, you, can pick, you should have picked your pencils up. You should be writing with me now. Okay, the inverse is a negative, or we could say subtracting G. Okay, because it's subtraction, we do our upside down T. Subtract G from both sides. Subtract G from both sides. G minus G cancels to be zero. Okay, and we're left with T equals V. And I'm going to write this sideways because we typically see, you know, subtraction sideways. We're left with V minus G. Okay. Now, and let's write it this way real quick. So T is equal to, you got to keep it in the same order, V minus G. Now, you may be thinking, well, Mr. Irwin, I thought we should put them in alphabetical order, so it should be G and then V, okay? N here's why that is not the case. With subtraction, order matters. So if I do 2 minus 5, that is not the same as 5 minus 2. Okay, this one you get negative 3, this one you get positive 3. Those are two totally different numbers. So with subtraction, we can't just change the order and put them in alphabetical order. We have to keep the subtraction the way it is. Okay, and that is it for this objective. We will practice more of these in class. Make sure your notes look exactly like mine.